Hello, dear students. This is your science teacher, Ben, and I'm sure you are all doing great, staying safe, healthy at home. So today we will start a new chapter, that is the third chapter, metals and non-metals. And this is the third chapter from the chemistry. So the first five chapters in your science textbook are all your chemistry portion, okay? So after this chapter, we'll start with physics, and then we'll start with biology, clear? So if uh, metals and non-metals, this is just a repetition of the first two chapters, clear students? So in this chapter, what we will learn? First, we'll learn the physical and chemical properties. Physical and chemical properties for both metals and metals, clear? It's very important, like even in the acid and base chapter, first we started with physical and chemical properties of acid and base. So same here, we are uh, going to study like physical and chemical properties in details. Next thing, we'll study about the reaction between metals and non-metals, okay? Between metals and non-metals. The third thing, what we're gonna study here is, we are going to study their occurrence. How do we get metals, clear? And there are many steps. The metals that we get now in the market, it's not what we get like naturally, clear? It has to go many steps, refining, cleaning, everything. So we'll study everything, occurrence, concentration, how they are concentrate, concentrated like to get the final product, clear? And the last, last part of this chapter, we'll, we'll study corrosion. This corrosion we have studied in the first chapter. So we'll just, I'll just give you important points and examples because we have covered this corrosion in our first chapter, clear? So we'll start with physical and chemical properties to begin with, clear students, for both metals and non-metals. Now, uh, we have 118 elements in the modern periodic table, okay? So out of that 118 elements, uh, it is divided into metals and non-metals. We have metals and non-metals. And also, we have a third one, that is metalloids, okay? Metalloids. Metalloids, metalloids are those that exhibit both uh, metal and non-metal behavior, clear? Okay, so we'll start with the physical properties for metal. For first, we'll study for metals. Now, have you ever heard about malleability? Malleability is, our, uh, malleability is a property where metal, metals can be beaten, okay, into thin sheets. Let's give an example. Uh, a sulfur powder, a sulfur powder, we will not consider that as a metal. So if you just hammer it, if you just beat it, we wouldn't get a tin sheet. But let's say example, iron nail or a copper wire. If you just beat it, like if you hammer it, then it will turn into a tin sheet. So metal has that property to, uh, to, become, to get malleable, okay? So the first one is most of the metals have Most of the metals are malleable, okay, or malleability. Now, uh, but among, we have many metals, so gold. Gold and silver are co considered to be the most malleable metal, clear? The second one is ductility. Ductility. This is also an important uh, property of metals. Without this property, I, uh, I don't think you'll have a hand ring, ornaments, jewelry, you know. Clear? Because metal has this property. And what is this ductility? It is uh, those which can be drawn into wires. So metals, they have this property, okay? Ductility, where they can be drawn into a wires. And the same here. Gold is most ductile uh, metal, clear? 
Now, the third property, physical property that we will study under the metals would be hardness. Hard. Hardness. Yes, metals are hard, but it varies. Clear? Not all metals are hard, but usually, like, majority of the metals are hard. But we have these metals, certain metals like, okay, Na, which is sodium. We have K. K, like in kite, okay? K, that is potassium. These are very dangerous and highly reactive metals. But uh, as the saying goes, don't judge the book by its cover. So these are very soft. Though they are metals, but they are very soft. Uh, they are very dangerous because this sodium and potassium, we can even cut with a knife. Clear? To that extent, they are soft. But if we just expose them in an open air, they can react with oxygen. They can react with the air, clear? And they can, we, it, it can cage a fire. So uh, this sodium and potassium are soft, clear? And it is dangerous. It is very highly reactive. And they are very, uh, they can even cut with a knife. So uh, in your NCRT text, you have a question. You have a question, why sodium and metals? Um, sodium and potassium metal are kept immersed in kerosene oil. Kerosene oil. So you can turn, uh, you can, uh, after this class, you can go and you can do this, uh, you can write this answer on your own. You have a question. So the answer is very simple. They are, uh, this sodium and potassium are kept in uh, kerosene oil because they are very highly reactive and to prevent it from uh, catching an accidental fire uh, they are kept immersed in the kerosene oil clear so hardness is done now next is they are good conductor metals and non metal uh, metals are good conductors of heat and electricity good conductors of heat and electricity. This we have been studying from right from the class five, six, seven, that metals are good conductor of, of heat and electricity. So I'm sure you know about this point. Mm, okay, now the next point will be melting and boiling point. Metals, they have very high melting and boiling point. Clear? Metals, they have high melting and boiling point. Now, one example uh, I want to give is like among, yes, they have high melting and boiling point, but among the metals, tungsten, okay? You have, you just keep this word in mind, T-U-N-G-S-T-E-N. Tungsten is, uh, tungsten has like the highest melting and boiling point among all the metals. Why? Because example is, say like electric bulb. You just, uh, you, put, you switch on and then you keep, keep it for 9, 10, or 11 hours. So you keep it for more hours. But uh, the melt, since the melting point is high, the boy, melt, uh, we don't get to see any dangerous thing from there. Clear? So this is the highest melting point. And okay, going back to this conductor of heat among the metals, copper has the copper has the the good conductor of heat. Okay. Okay. So please note this point down. The next point for I'll just continue here. Clear. The next physical property for metals would be luster. Luster is nothing but it is uh, the other word for shiny. Shiny, okay, shiny. Metals are shiny. Now, the other properties for metals would be uh, metals, they are sonorous. Sonorous. Sonorous means it is related with sound. So metals, if, you, if someone he, uh, something hits metal, you get a sound. So example, school bell, church bell, you are, you are all familiar with that. So, 
Okay, so let's keep it simple. These are the important properties of metals. You note it down and write the examples as well. Clear? Now, next, we'll study about the chemical properties for metals. After that, we'll go for physical and chemical properties for non-metals. So note it down. Okay, students, so the next uh, topic is chemical properties. Chemical properties. Chemical properties of metals. Now, if we are studying about the metals, it is very important to know the chemical properties of metals. How will they react? Clear? How will they react with the water, uh, air, oxygen, water, acids, those stuff? Clear? So first, let's study um, what result we will get if metal reacts with air, okay, oxygen. So let's keep it simple. I'm just writing in a very simple form. So the first one would be reaction with air, okay, or oxygen. So what, would the, what result would we get from here? Now, let's uh, write the common one. We have been using sodium uh, for many examples. Now let's use aluminum here, Al. Oxygen is O2, so what will get? Clear? So student, when we react metal with oxygen, it's very simple. We are getting metal oxide. Clear? Metal oxide. So even here, see, aluminum is metal. O means oxide. So I'm sure you are clear with this. Now, we also have, we can write copper, and we have oxygen. This simply we can write copper oxide, clear? So likewise, we can write sodium, we can write, we can, you can practice with, you can put any metal here, and oxygen, and then you'll get metal oxide. Now, but uh, in the previous chapter, we have studied that metal oxide are usually basic in nature, clear? Metal oxide are usually basic in nature. Base means they are OH, bitter in taste, soapy to touch. I'm sure you're collecting everything. Okay. But this aluminum oxide, but some metal oxide like, and in chemistry, see, I'm just cut, uh, referring to other point, but in chemistry, there are always exceptions, okay? Exceptions. So this aluminum and zinc come under exception. So. Aluminum oxide and zinc oxide, they show both uh, basic uh, character as well as acidic character. Now, usually metal oxide should be basic in nature, but aluminum oxide and zinc oxide, they act, okay? They can act like an acid, they can act like a base. That's why they are also known as amphoteric oxide, okay? Amphoteric oxide, A-M-P-H-O-T-E-R-I-C oxide. How they react as like as, uh, how they can react both like acidic and base? I will show you now. Now, this is our aluminum oxide, and this is also aluminum oxide. Clear? Now, let's take example of acid. HCl. Now, let's take example of base. Let's take the stronger one, NaOH. Now you all know that this is base because we have OH. This is acid because we have H. And this is also one of the strongest acid, dangerous. Now this is acid, now this is base. Now the results here, we have here acid and we have aluminum oxide. We have here base and this is aluminum oxide. Now, like I've said, this aluminum oxide, they they behave acidic as well as basic. Now, when they react with acid, he will act like a base. Clear? Now, when this aluminum oxide, the same thing was acting like a base when it reacted with acid. But now, when the opponent is base, now he will react like an acid. So, this aluminum oxide, they are example of amphoteric oxide. Amphoteric means showing what behavior, okay? Amphoteric oxide. 
Now, see, we have metal oxide and acid, metal oxide and base. The result is very simple. We'll get salt and water. Clear? And now we have aluminum oxide and sodium hydroxide. So from here, we'll get sodium aluminate, OK? And water. So this is a salt. This is a water. This is a salt. This is a water. Everything is same, but their behavior is changing. Clear? So please note down this equation. This equation, uh, you can write like if they ask you example of amphoteric oxide, you can show this one. And this is also like, uh, this chemical equation is also an example for metal oxide reacting with acid or a base. Clear? So note down this equation. The next chemical properties that we'll study is what results we will get like when uh, metals react with water. Clear? Metals react with water. But um, here, before we jump to that second topic, I have something to add like uh, regarding metal and oxygen. Clear? All metals and oxygen, the results, the way they react is very different. Like, let's start with sodium and potassium. Just by exposing, it can catch a fire. Now, let's take example magnesium. Magnesium is also a metal, but you have to burn it. Normal burning, normal burning, and then it will catch a fire, okay? And then, say like zinc, you have, we have to heat like a maximum, okay? We have to heat in a more temperature and to, burn, to burn the zinc. Now, like iron, have you ever seen how iron burn? It burns in the form of a fillings, clear? Okay, okay. and then uh, we have, uh, Silver. Silver does not react with uh, oxygen at all. So all metals, the way they react with the air, the oxygen surrounding is very different. It's, they also have a ranking, the, the reactivity order. Clear? So next uh, chemical property will be metal reacting with water. The, dear students, next uh, chemical property is metal reacting with water. This we have... Uh, the same uh, chemical equation we have done many times in our uh, previous class, last two classes. So whenever m m metal react with water, we will get like oxide, metal oxide, and hydrogen gas will be liberated, clear? But we have like, uh, like let's say for sodium, if we react it with water, we will get uh, metal hydroxide, that is NaOH, and hydrogen gas will be liber liberated. And along with it, a large amount of heat will be released, which is, uh, this is also like very dangerous because the reaction where we get like a large amount of heat is released. It's also an example of exothermic re uh, reaction, which we have studied in our first chapter, releasing heat, exothermic, absorbing heat, endothermic, I'm sure. You are familiar with those reaction now. Okay, so the next thing we'll study with, uh, the next chemical property we are going to study is metal reacting with acid, clear? So this equation also we have, it's, I'm, I'm sure you are familiar because we have studied in our first, uh, in our second chapter, in our acid base. So let's, let's take any metal here. Let's take, uh, we can take zinc, for a change, let's take HCl, then we'll get zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. So metal reacts with acid to give salt and hydrogen gas. This example I have uh, already said that if you flushed an acid in a metal, then one thing for sure you're gonna observe is hydrogen gas coming out and uh, the salt that we, you will get. Okay, so the chemical properties for metals is over, and I would also request you to uh, refer the textbook, practice the chemical equation, clear? 
The next, now we'll go to physical property of non-metals. We have completed the physical property and chemical properties of metals. Now, next is for non-metals. So, physical properties of non-metals. Okay, for physical properties of non-metal, non-metals, they can exist and we can get in a solid, liquid, or gas. In any form, we can get non-metals, clear? But there is an exception because diamond. Diamond is also a non-metal, but diamond being an allotrop of carbon. Diamond is an allotrop of carbon. This, okay, uh, allotropes of carbon and all, we'll study details in the fourth chapter, carbon and its compound, clear? So diamond is an allotrop of carbon and it is it falls under a non-metals. But diamond is the hardest substance known. The hardest substance known. Clear? Okay. Now let's talk about uh, brittleness. Brittle Yes. B R I double T L E N E S S. So non metals are brittle in nature. Where brittle means, let's take example of chocolate. Chocolate, you can just break it into pieces. So non metals, they have this property that is brittleness. Clear? Now, non metals, they are bad conductor of uh, the electricity, heat and electricity. They are bad conductors of heat and electricity. Clear? But here, there is also an exception because graphite. Why I'm giving exception? Because exceptions are important. So graphite is a non-metal, okay? Graphite is also an electrop of carbon, but graphite conducts an electricity. It's a conductor of electricity. Conductor of electricity. So yes, the first one is the physical state that can exist in solid, liquid, or gas, but diamond, it is the hardest substance known. Now the second one is brittleness. They can break, they can be break into pieces like a chocolate. So they are brittle in nature. The third one is they are bad conductor of heat and electricity. Clear? So we have more, but let's keep it simple. We'll just uh, study these three points, clear? Okay, now we'll go to the chemical properties of non-metals. Chemical properties of non-metals. Students, uh, chemical properties of non-metals. This is our topic now. So it's, everything is related and very similar. Now, non-metals. If non-metals react with Non-metals, okay, reacting with oxygen, okay, oxygen. Now, in the chemical properties of metal, we get like metal react with oxygen to give metallic oxide, right? So now here, non-metal reacts with oxygen to give non-metallic oxide. It's similar, non-metallic oxide. Example is a uh, common one, hydrogen is not a metal, right? So it falls under a non-metal. So H2, which means hydrogen. Now oxygen, that's the air. So O2, we get H2O done. So this is a neutral, this is a neutral non-metallic oxide. Clear. So uh, we can write carbon, oxygen, that will be another acidic oxide. So everything with non-metals and oxygen will get non-metallic oxide. Very simple. Clear? Now, uh, the second property would be reaction with acid. Now, non-metals here, just you can write it, I will say, explain. Non-metals does not react with uh, dilute acid. Clear? Because non-metal, Non-metal, they cannot like uh, 
they don't lose an electron, okay? They are the receiver, uh, non-metals. So non-metals does not react with dilute acid. And the last chemical property for non-metals would be they also show displacement reaction. Non-metals can also show displacement reaction. And I'll show you one example for that. Displacement reaction, as we have discussed earlier, the same concept applies here. Now, let's take chlorine. Okay, no, I'll write here, non-metals, non-metals show displacement reaction, reaction. I'm writing this one in both letter, okay. Now let's take chlorine, and now let's take bromide. NaBr. So this is chlorine and this is sodium bromide. Now, chlorine can displace bromide. So this is how displacement reaction can take place in non-metals. Since this is non-metal, clear? This is non-metal, this is chlorine. Chlorine and NaBr means sodium bromide, okay? Sodium bromide. So now after the displacement reaction, we get sodium chloride and bromine is separated out. And why we have Br2 here, the same com uh, concept applies here because in order to be stable, uh, they need a backup. That's what I, just to keep it very simple, you take it in that way. Okay, so physical property, chemical property for both metals and non-metals are over. Now we'll study another, like the next topic that will be reaction between metal and non-metal. So it, in, in other words, it will be a relationship between uh, as, uh, metals and non-metals, okay? Okay, uh, students are, Next topic would be reaction between acid and, I'm sorry, metals and non-metals, okay? Next would be reaction, reaction between uh, acid, uh, metal and non-metals. Okay, students, now to start this, I want to show you something, NaCl or H2O or anything. Like I said in the beginning, we have 118 elements, right? And what about this? Sodium is also an, uh, an element in a periodic table. Sodium is different. Now, chlorine is also different, right? But why do we say sodium chloride? Because they are bonded. Because this is a compound, right? This is a common salt. Now we have water. What makes water? We have two hydrogen and one oxygen combined together here. That means there is a bond. Clear, there is a bond. Even here, there is a bond. If I say copper sulfate, there is a bond. Between copper, we have sulfur here, we have four oxygen. So there is a bond, okay? That binds them together. So they become one compound. So we have two types of bond in chemistry. And we, the bond that we are going to study now here is ionic bond. And the second type of bond is covalent bond, which is very important for uh, the next, from, from your next chapter, carbon and its compound. So, so you write down the definition. We have two types of bond. So the first one is ionic bond. Ionic, ionic bond. The other word for ionic bond is electrovalent bond, okay? Electrovalent bond. Electrovalent bond. Now the second type of bond is covalent bond. It's covalent bond. So what is the difference between them? 
The difference is uh, bone formed by transferring of electron. So this is bone formed by transferring of electron. Here I'm just writing in a short form to save time. E means electron, okay? And this is bone formed by bone form by sharing of electron sharing of electron okay okay so the the main difference between them is ionic ionic means it's to do with plus and minus right student so ionic bond is bond formed by transferring of electron and now we have covalent bond here that is bond formed by sharing of electron okay so not down this students this covalent bond will study in chapter 4 but now you have to know the concept of this ionic bond clear for this very topic uh, for reaction between metals and non-metals we have to know the concept of ionic bond that is bond formed by transferring of electron so if you are done with this i'll wrap this one okay okay students uh you have heard about the K, L, N, N shell in the class 9 chemistry. Clear? So, I'm giving you the same example, the easiest one, which uh, is often referred in your textbook. Clear? So now, in N, A, and C, L, there is a bond. And here, we have an ionic bond. Ionic bond. And the, the main thing is they all try to be, all the elements, okay, all the elements in the periodic table, they have one goal. The goal is to become stable. The goal is to become stable. And the, we, we also have the most stable group in the periodic table. That is the group 18. Clear? Group 18. So the stable number, the step, okay, this one, I'm just giving a brief idea today. I'll give you a home assignment as well to study the periodic table, to go through it. And I'm just, uh, I'll just give you a very short, to get familiar with this bond, so that in the next class when we start, it won't be a new thing for you, clear? So this is an ionic bond. The, the most stable group is group 18. So we have the stable number, is eight or two, okay? Two or eight is the stable number. Two or eight is the goal. So now, for NaCl, we know that sodium, the atomic number is 11. Keep this in mind. If you see the periodic table in your textbook, you'll see that sodium has an atomic number 11. And we have chlorine, the atomic number is 17. Clear? So, I'm sure you, you are familiar with writing the electro electronic configuration, okay? So, let's see, two, eight, one, two, eight, seven, see? See, so, uh, sodium, the configuration is this one. Chlorine, the configuration, the electronic configuration is this one. Now, two, eight, one, max 11, two, eight, seven, max 17, right? But they, they are not stable, and everyone, their goal is to become stable. So now, uh, the outermost shell, when I say outermost shell, this would be the outermost shell. Just take example of the outermost building, the outermost fo uh, floor, clear? So this is the outermost shell. So now, for sodium to become a stable, he needs either, see, since I said like eight is the goal, right? Sodium in the outermost shell, it has only one. So sodium needs either, uh, sodium needs to throw this one. Throwing one is easier for him to get eight. Clear? And then chlorine needs one to become an eight. Because eight is a number. So chlorine needs one, sodium needs to throw one, so they transfer. And this is a very interesting topic if you understand the concept. So today, I'll leave you with uh, 
some home assignment, that is to go through the periodic table as well and write this electronic configuration and, I, and then get familiar with the, uh, with the outermost shell, which one is called outermost shell, get familiar with all the KLM and the whatever basic knowledge you have learned, like uh, the sci whatever you have learned in class nine, everything we are going to apply here. So for today, please uh, continue, go through the notes, whatever we have studied today, because if you don't understand what, if you don't like uh, get what we are doing today, next class it will be difficult for you. So we are leave, uh, I'll wind up from here and we'll continue in the next class. Thank you so much.